I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any revisions to the minutes from our last meeting? Hearing none, we'll accept them as presented. Thank you. Open forum. Um, at this time, we'd like to give uh, district residents an opportunity to ask any questions about the agenda or about operations within the school district. Personnel matters will not be addressed in public session. Comments may be recorded and responded to by the Board of Education or the superintendent and will be done so within 24 to 48 hours. We ask that you keep your comments to five minutes or less. Hearing none, we'll move along. Or we'll embarrass Mr. King and, and wait until he comes in to be seated. Girls are up five to two. All right, good. Nice. That's a good reason. Save yourself there, Mr. <laughs> King. Nice job. Uh, and agenda changes. Hearing none, we'll move on to presentations. Kimberly, would you like to introduce our presenters? We have Lisa Collins here. She represents our task program. She's going to tell us this evening about the offerings for our children after school. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Many of you know me already, and um, I come to talk to the board uh, usually once a year, but I think we skipped a year because there was so much stuff going on in the last little bit. And I give you a little history of the program and what we've been doing, and I always, you know, believe in um, having, like, you know, something to hands-on, so I'll pass around one of the things that we've made this year, and by the end of it, you'll know what it is. If you already know what it is, don't shout it out, okay? <laughs> the kids made these this year. We had great fun with them. Um, they're based on a boondoggle knot that you probably all learned in camp when you were younger. Love boondoggle. Yeah? Yes. Don't guess. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, it, it has been an incre incredibly busy year. Um, you know, we have moved um, from strength to strength with a lot of the different projects that we've been working on. Uh, I'm going to start with a little bit of history, and I do use notes because otherwise I'll go on and then, you know, if you have anything you want to ask me, that's fine. Um, TASP provided, provides a structured, supervised program for after school in grades uh, K through five. We can have sixth graders, but traditionally for a couple years we have not. As our kindergarten program has expanded, our sixth grade program has kind of dropped off the face. Um, I think part of it is because the fifth graders have so much on offer that they're going from here to there and doing all kinds of different things after school. Um, and so part of our role has become for fifth graders, okay, on Tuesday you need to go to soccer at 4 o'clock and on you know, Thursday you're going to come back to us at 4 o'clock, you know, so that, to try and keep track of what all the children are doing so that they stay safe um, on campus. Um, so we operate in the schools using all the cafeterias, the playground, gymnasiums, bathrooms, and hallways. Care is provided from 2.45 to 5.45 on regular school days, and um, during half days we do cover the half conference days. We currently have an average of 62 children attending daily, representing roughly 10% of the children in, in the, the, these grades. And nine of the children that graduated this year, young, young adults, um, had been in after school in the past and I, during my reign here, so it was kind of fun to you know, pick out all the different faces in the paper. Um, so after school is a, it was founded in 1985. It's a registered um, program following New York State daycare regulations for child care, which is quite an amazing document. If you ever want a little light reading, just go online and find it. And about three years ago, they added another like eight pages to it, both sides. So it's it's they really keep us, you know, uh, jumping through hoops to make sure that we're keeping up with regulations and keeping the kids safe and moving. So, uh, after school is a nonprofit organization. It's tuition dependent for running costs. Uh, we get funding for enrichment, activity scholarship, and equipment. It's raised from parent um, fundraisers uh, and pledge drives and collecting bottle deposits at the Sure Safe. There's a little jar on the counter you can put your little receipt in, and, and we uh, benefit from that. Um, I also write grants for enrichment and for scholarship. 
The purpose of the program is to provide a safe, stimulating, and relaxed environment supervised by well-trained, caring team of adults so that families can feel confident um, when the day ends that their child comes straight to us, they grow in social, uh, socially, our social skills are one of our, our big uh, things that we work on, uh, but mixed age, uh, neighborhood-like setting, they get to try new things, they get to have fun. Um, we provide a combination of favorite activities because kids will request things. Uh, but we also try, you know, to have some fun, different ones so that the kids get a chance to learn something new or like a, just to listen to what they want to do and, and get some ideas from them too. Um, let's see. And while we do offer homework help, we believe that our most important job is getting kids moving and um, outside play almost daily and low-tech activities. We don't have Game Boys. We don't have any of that stuff so that we don't have computer access for the children. We do occasionally do karaoke, which you're welcome to join us in if you'd like. Um, we do you know, some of that kind of stuff, but we really just try not to have that part be part of our curriculum. Um, and TV too. We don't watch a lot of movies or have television on. Um, okay. We provide opportunities that foster good relationships and children learn to respect their similarities and differences through play. Our wonderful supervising team of 11 currently includes just one high school student this year. Um, part of the reason for that is that we hired another adult for the younger program because we, have, we had 11 kindergartners last year. And it, it's a really long week for them and a really long day for them. So we decided this year that we would hire an extra adult instead of a teen so that we could splinter them off and go and read stories on pillows and let them fall asleep if they want to, but just to give them a little bit of a quiet time. And a teenager, we're not allowed to leave alone with the children. So but with the uh, adults, we can do that. Um, but it gives the, the um, teenager that we have is Meredith Bump, and she's coming back, and she's really awesome. The kids love her. And uh, you know, it's, it's nice to have that different kind of energy level, too, with a, a much younger person. Keeps us in tune a little bit differently. Um, the elementary program director is Beth Miles, and she's been with us many years now. Loads of youth experience, runs a great program. She encourages the fun social play, lots of dramatic play, you know, with costumes and all kinds of stuff. Building with recyclables, lots of experiments. Uh, she did a course on STEM uh, teaching last year, and so she's brought a lot of that into the, the program with the K through second grade. Um, she loves working with the, the younger children, and her motto with the 11 kindergartens gardeners last year was keep it simple. Just <laughs> you know, just keep it simple. We painted a lot with shaving cream. We did Play-Doh. We did melting ice with salt water. We did a lot of experimenting. And um, the activities that we offer are choice-based, so the children don't have to take part in those. Uh, they can choose a different thing to play with. Um, Anne Graham started with us in April um, in the middle school program with. Uh, third, fourth, and fifth grade, but we are currently splitting our second grade group to have some of the, the children move to the middle school program. She's got lots of youth experience and believes in keeping a routine with new experiences to help children develop to the full. She's reinstated the walking field trips, going to Not My Dad's. That's a no-brainer, right? <laughs> um, lunar Can we volunteer life. for that, Lisa? Yes, okay. yes, we need chaperones all the time, not a problem. Um, if we get enough chaperones, we could take the kindergartners. <laughs> one on one. Um, we also went to the Lunar Fiber Studio that's um, over by Green Horse Books, and that was wonderful, real hands on demonstration on how to wind bobbins and use the different sorts of looms. That was really good fun. Um, we also, they also went to the School of Woods, and they have a list that they want to do next year, too, so that we get to see some of the different businesses in town. You know, the, the campus is really situated beautifully for um, a lot of community uh, integration. So that the more that we can get the kids out and loving where they live, um, I think it will help them develop and grow uh, in a good way. Okay, we live in a beautiful community. We want our youth to be connected and we want them to develop into balanced teens and adults. And I think the school has really is a great part of that, the community and letting People come in and do different things right in the school. The children are watching karate demonstrations and you know the, the different um, hula hoops they had this past year, yoga, and 
what was the other thing? The, um, the, the aerobic dance in the elementary gym. And as they go by, they're like, we have to, we have to look to see what's going on there. Um, anyway, uh, the enrichment programs um, that we have done this past year have included the uh, courtyard entrance garden to the elementary school. We only do it inside the courtyard because if you've ever weeded with children, you know that it's a near impossible thing. Mm -hmm. And so I know that there's a lot of weeds around, but we've been trying to keep the inside clear. Um, we added new rocks, plants, stumps to sit on, which the children that donated them actually painted the, the tops of those. Artwork signs, temporary displays of butterflies, alien gourds, painted rocks and flowers. Um, right now, the nasturtiums and clematis are in bloom. So for the start of the school year, there's orange and purple in that garden, which is kind of nice. Um, the raptor program from Cornell brought birds from around the world. The Huguenot Nature Center um, brought a blue tongue skink, hedgehog, and turtle. Uh, we do a lot of bringing in to the younger program because the children are, you know, it's hard to get them on a bus and it's more calm for them to be in, in sight. Uh, Alice Gant taught the children quilt making, producing a forest scene complete with penguins. They use sewing machines. We now have two sewing machines, so we are teaching sewing to the children. Um, and fabric crayons and paint. The finished quilt was on display on Main Street. And we, I just picked it up from the fair yesterday. So you probably can see we, some of the stuff is more traditional. Uh, but we also have to have, you have to have a toucan in the forest scene. And, you know, some uh, whatever this creature is. and. <laughs> wolves and penguins and butterflies and fish just because you need to and the children did the kind of they they picked what they wanted to do on a piece of muslin and then they used the fabric crayons and the um, paint to to do the colors we have recolored it once because it did fade quite a bit on the main street um, uh, window so if anybody wants to look further yeah. all right you have to have props <laughs> Um, we, let's see, skipping right along, we had Jorge Schweves come again to do the Latin percussion uh, demonstration with the instruments and music that really gets everybody moving. Sky um, Science Center brought the Sky Lab to us and we did silk screen bags with Laura Rowley, so the children did the designs and then they silk screened bags. Uh, we did jewelry making with Jan Wolford, now I helped her because I, I can do that too but it's more fun for the children if it's me working with somebody else that runs it and I just kind of help facilitate um, and get them using the, the pliers and stuff. Uh, we also believe it's important to participate in community projects. Um, we do a friendship tree that's at the Sure Save during the Winter Festival. We made, does anybody know what they are? Did Dog anybody toys? figure out what that thing is? Dog toys? What? Yes, dog toys. Um, somebody had given a dog, to, yeah, this one's a new one. Um, a smaller version of this to the dog that we got when, when he was a baby. And he loved it so much, I thought, how difficult can it be? You know, so the cutting, I cut the strips because I didn't want children to um, use exacto knives and things. But it's just a boondoggle knot. You can make square ones or round ones. And they, that's a, a, such a nice thing for their mouths that he loves. He loves it. I guess I like it too. Um, <laughs> we also made um, cat beds from recycled materials. Uh, picture taking a big sweatshirt and sewing it around and stuffing it and putting it down and it's a cat bed. Um, so if you ever have things like that you don't want. We did finger knitting with loops made from cut up socks and sewn together. Uh, and then we did t-shirt strip crochet and they crocheted a cat bed. It was a little smaller so I think it was a baby cat. <laughs> um, and then uh, catnip toys and mice uh, that were collected for the SPCA. So we also picked up trash on this, the playground and in the middle school pit. We try and keep that one clean when we can or once or twice a year. Um, we're pleased to be able to continue using the school facilities to support our program in a familiar, safe environment. This helps minimize tra transitional stress for parents and children. It also allows youth to take part in school-sponsored activities, theatrical plays, choral and sports practice, and after-school help. Last year was the first time I actually walked a fifth grader to the high school to make sure that she got, because she was helping in the, the high school play. It was pretty exciting. Um, and uh, th so thank you for the use of the facilities. Thank you to Jeannie and Josh for helping us 
with all this program space. Uh, the custodian and cafeteria staff that share space and help keep it all working as the groups move from kids going out to be picked up with their parents to us coming into the space. It, it, it's an orchestration, you know, I know. Uh, so Joe, thank you for all you do. He answers all my questions that keep us in regulations. Right? With the fire this and that thing's changed and how do I do this? And um, so he's really good at answering questions for that. And I believe we're getting some repurposed cabinets um, for the school year to store our junk in. It'll look a lot nicer. Um, office personnel, teachers, and transportation who help us locate absent children and provide support. There's nothing scarier than not being able to find a kid and after school. And half the time, they're either on the bus by mistake, the parent forgot to tell us that they were picked up early, or there's like a little lag in, in whatever the communication. And being right on the school, they can stop the buses, they can you know, get the children off the bus or bring them back to us after the buses have been released. So that's a, a real comfort, I think, for families too, that there's such a good team working to keep their children safe. Um, we also occasionally use some classrooms, so thank you to the teachers for letting us you know, borrow classrooms to do art projects and things. And phys ed teachers and athletic teams who have altered their practice schedule so we can be in the gym until the cafeteria is ready. Nurses for their expertise on health issues. I'm always going to Bethany and going, what's going around? There's like two pages of absent kids. What's going around? What do we need to look for? Um, right, so everybody, thank you so much for hosting us and, and uh, giving us a really nice place to have the children after school. So. Thank you. Thank you for your Thank you. I just wondered if there were questions for Lisa. Well, it's great to be able to partner with the SIP, and um, it sounds like you're doing, continuing to do a wonderful job of, of, of learning activities and, and socializing and, and play after school for our, our children. So we thank you. Yeah, thank you. And if anybody has ideas, I'm always like looking for things. You know, how hard can it be, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And Angie, I believe you're going to bring us up to date on the blueprint overview? Sure. Um, so we talked about it at the retreat, so I right. won't go into detail, but just for the big public here, the general yes. public, the public. Um, I'll give kind of just a brief overview. So there was an initiative that came down from the state this year to all districts, um, laying out some best practices for students, um, for all students. Um, there was, what I think is the great part about it is we had a team from each building. So this is one of those great examples of K-12 work that we've done. So we had a team from elementary, middle, and high school teachers, administrators, school psychologists that met for two days at BOCES to work with other districts, to work with a team there to learn these best practices and start to develop our own internal plans. We then um, moved mountains to get all of those teams together again this summer for a full day um, to finalize our plans for rollout for this year. So each of the buildings has a different initiative that they're focusing on. Um, the high school is working on creating a RTI team to target tier one and tier two interventions. We talked about that. Um, middle school um, has two goals, working uh, more closely on specially designed instruction at the tier one and tier two level and um, helping teachers to understand IEPs and the details of those IEPs a little bit more. Elementary school is also targeting tier one and tier two. Uh, with a real focus on strengthening our already strong co-teaching model um, and really looking at um, our RTI interventions, which Jeannie spoke to at the last meeting. Good, thank you. Any, any questions since we sort of had the, the, right, the, had the, the, the bigger overview at, at our retreat? Great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And Kimberly, would you like to introduce Brandy to talk to us about like to um, summer? Like Brandy Whips, who is our summer intern, overseeing our summer academy, which was held on our campus this year, and we accommodated approximately 60 students, mm -hmm. K through five. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brandy, take it from there. Okay, thank you so much for having me here tonight and allowing me to speak with you about the program that took place on our campus. I've prepared a few slides for you, just highlighting um, our program this summer, and I'll be happy to 
entertain any questions that you might have as well. Hang on. Is it? Transition to the slideshow. There it is. Okay. Good. Okay, that's great. So, um, our theme for the summer was ready for s'more learning. The teachers collectively got together and decided that they would have a camping traveling theme for the summer for our students and it really went over very well. The students loved it and the teachers loved it too. So we spent four weeks with six amazing teachers, three aides, one wonderful nurse, a fabulous library clerk, um, and a, anywhere about 50 to 60 K through 5 students were on our campus. And they focused primarily on reading, writing, math, and having an awful lot of fun. All of our staff was from our elementary school uh, and we did have one um, teacher's aide who came to us from Boynton, but the rest of our staff was all our own staff that was here. So our schedule was a half day schedule. Students arrived around 8.30 and they left around noon and between 8.30 and noon they worked on um, reading skills, writing skills, there was time built in for them to have breakfast. So as soon as they arrived, they were able to go downstairs and have breakfast. Breakfast was provided for us through the um, Ithaca City School District lunch program. So that was a great thing. All of the students took advantage of that, often having seconds. They enjoyed it. <laughs> they really enjoyed it. Uh, the schedules varied from classroom to classroom. Students were placed based on um, the RTI information we had from the elementary school. So benchmark assessments, running records, and their star scores were what determined um, if they were gonna be invited for the summer to help with um, regression of skills so that they continued on the right trajectory for the school year. So once they had breakfast, various classes either went to the library for story time, for reading, for checking out books, doing projects, or they began their reading instruction or their math instruction and so on and so forth. That's a sample schedule and that's a picture of our students working with Mrs. King in the library to um, work on stories and be able to check books in and out. She did a fabulous job for us running back and forth between the elementary building and our building in the middle school to bring books back and forth so the kids could have access to those. And this was what grade level was it in? These were, these were students that if you had finished kindergarten and you had finished fifth grade, you were, you were invited to come. And students were placed in the grade that they had just finished. So it was K through five. This is just a, a little example. Students spend a lot of time being very creative and, and taking a lot of ownership of their projects for the summer. So the younger kids spend a lot of time writing stories and incorporating math and reading into the curriculum with some projects. Um, we had a couple of students work here displayed you can see they got together with their teacher and they came up with the idea of creating kindness rocks so in addition to writing their stories about camping and all of their adventures and going all over they created kindness rocks that the teachers helped them put notes on the back of and then they left them in various places for people to find and then pass on or keep if they wanted to they did a great job writing their stories and um, they were very creative the fact that it was such a small grouping of students in each classroom really gave the kids an opportunity to get the one-on-one -on -one attention that they needed and help, uh, help them to stay on target for the school year. Um, so for reading and writing skills as well as their math time, those tiny groups really gave them what they needed. They also had an opportunity to work on their social growth and um, spending time with each other and just having some fun. So this is just an example of the teachers fabulous creativity decorating the classrooms. They transformed them. It was amazing. That's a pond with the trees and the fish. The younger kids really liked that. And they had a campfire and a bear. Yeah. Not a real fire. The classes were about <laughs> eight to ten That's students, right. right? The classes were about eight to ten students. We deliberately kept them small for that purpose so that they would get the the one-on-one -on -one work that they needed. Um, what I was super excited to see this summer was the enthusiasm that the students showed um, when they came to school. They absolutely loved coming every single day. We had parents and students coming talking about how excited they were to be there. We even had a couple of students who, believe it or not, were feeling under the weather and insisted their parents bring them anyway. We ended up sending them home, but they wanted to come <laughs> very badly to school. That doesn't happen, um, generally. So that was really exciting to see. 
Um, so the fact that we mixed the learning with a fun camping theme, it was something that the kids really took to. The older kids really took ownership of their learning because they were able to create larger projects, they wrote their own newsletters, they were able to create presentations, they were able to um, design board games, which you'll see some pictures of uh, around a world traveler theme. So they kind of moved away from the camping and kind of branched out into world travelers. They also worked on their math skills. Most of them were able to advance towards a black belt in math this summer, um, practicing their math skills. The um, rising um, fifth graders, these guys will be in fifth grade next year, they were world travelers. They investigated all different countries and continents. They were able to create these lovely um, poster presentations that had graphs and geography and information about their animals. I mean, they incorporated everything all into one, the reading, the writing, and the math. And they really enjoyed presenting. The rising sixth graders, so the fifth grade class, they chose a wonder of the world. And they um, presented to all the staff that was in the building, they invited us individually to come and watch the presentations, which consisted of not only a slideshow, but also um, they created a board game. Each of them individually picked a wonder and created a board game, and all of the parts were to scale. So you'll see a picture in a minute of an Eiffel Tower that's actually, for every centimeter, it's equal to so many feet, and she actually, they all created them to scale. And then once we saw their presentations, we also were invited to sit and play the game with them. So Mr. Hunkley was there, he got to play a game with the students, and I did as well as the rest of our staff. So here are a couple. We have the Galapagos Islands. We had the Eiffel Tower. We had the Great Blue Hole in Belize. The kids were very creative, and it really tapped into their, their ability to communicate because they had to, they had to write out the instructions, make sure everything was coherent. They had to create all of the questions, so there were some very difficult math problems that they had to solve. And they had a ball doing it. They had an absolute ball doing it. They loved it. And that's just a little collage of our students. We did build in recess time, so they got 20 minutes of recess time every day, and they were fed lunch before they left, um, which they thoroughly enjoyed. The pizza was a big hit, um, as well as uh, they had a barbecued shredded chicken that they loved. So those days, they were often seconds or thirds <laughs> that they ate. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. I can just add on a little bit. That, yes, you know, please. Being in the community and having small kids, I know a lot of the parents, and there was, I think, some hesitation going into summer academy. Like, I don't know, is it still going to be summer for my kid? I don't know if they're going to like it. And the feedback that I heard, you know, echoes what Randy said. It was just wonderful. The kids loved going. It was just enough time, you know, four weeks and a half day. It wasn't all summer. Just mm -hmm. enough fun put in there. They had recess every day. Uh, I can also say that I went around and talked to um, almost every teacher that was working and heard the same thing. You know, I really liked working at summer school. It was just just the right amount of time. Really felt like I got to know the kids with the small classes. And I think it's important to note that we had them all switch grade levels too because of the pool of teachers that we got. You know, if you'd been a kindergarten teacher for 10 years, you didn't get the kindergarten kids. Maybe you got the first or second grade kids. So we really asked them to step out of their comfort zone and I think that mm -hmm. they really liked that. They so did. I think they were hesitant but really liked it. So the feedback I heard both from parents and from teachers was just overwhelmingly positive. positive. It really was. Mm -hmm. Yeah and, uh, and we didn't provide transportation for the students. The parents brought the students and that didn't pose too much of a problem. There were only maybe four students who weren't able to attend due to transportation issues but the, the rest of them were able to be there every day pretty consistently so barring a few vacations here or there which obviously you know they should get to go do but they were there <laughs> I would say next year the concern being you know parents knocking down our door wanting kids to be in summer academy mm -hmm. well that's a nice really problem to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well you know we did a little bit of recruiting this yeah. year to get, yeah. get up to that eight to ten is our ideal number per grade I, I see it yeah we right did next year and we certainly had a lot of teachers that were interested in we did so it went on their academic score so students kind of in the middle that we wanted to prevent regression mm -hmm. 
over the summer, kind of on mm -hmm. the middle of the yeah. road. Um, Identified through the, AIS the STAR, yeah, AAS services. Mm -hmm. um, we were the only district around that also did math. Um, yep. Most districts regionally um, were targeting just ELA, so we kind of stepped mm -hmm. out of the box a little bit, and teachers really rose to that as well, fitting mm -hmm. in that shorter day, how are we going to fit in library, reading, breakfast, math. lunch, yep. recess, um, yeah. reading, writing, and math, but they, I think they found They did. They work. were very successful. They came up with a great schedule that worked that worked well for the students. And this was under the umbrella of, um, of BOCES, too, so we were able to get you know funding to help you know, pay the teachers and, and take care of the things that we needed through BOCE. So it worked out really, really well. Yeah. We did, in fact, have a couple of students that requested um, the second week because their older sibling was there to come. <laughs> and uh, one week, well, we were able actually to get the two that wanted to come. We were able to get them to get them in. So we did, we did have a couple of students who asked if they could be there. A lot of which coordination was nice. with um, summer rec program, too. So I know yes. that there was. Um, some students who participated because this was only four weeks were doing summer recreation so at the end mm -hmm. of the summer academy would then go and get on swim bus so we were able to mm -hmm. was able to work out those details as well and they were able to still participate in summer rec but come over for the time at mm -hmm. summer academy yeah. so it was yeah. we were able to coordinate their field trips with our schedule so we knew where students were and where they were going so they were able to take advantage of both, both. I worked as um, counselors at the summer rec program yeah. and I remember a couple of the kids would run into lunch like raving about summer academy. Mm. They oh, would thank not you. stop talking about how like exciting it was and all the projects they were doing. They loved it so much. Oh, thank you. That's fabulous to hear. Yeah, it's very good. So, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a methodology in place to determine how successful the, the, this program is based in, in terms of... For the of data? Yeah. Yes. The teachers this summer kept running records um, and did some benchmark assessments. So we have all of that data. And as soon as I can coordinate with Jeannie we'll, and Angie, we'll take a look at all of that together. And we can determine, um, you know, how how that all pans out. Yeah. I have a question. Maybe. Certainly. Maybe, but, um, given the success... Given that we want to have smaller class sizes, is it possible to plan for expansion? Just there could be a possibility. I mean, it depends on the budget. So, as Brandy stated, we did uh, run it through a BOCES program, which means there's aid coming back on it. So, um, we can capitalize on some of that, but it's mm -hmm. too early to know at this point. And also, I know a student who attended it, and I now am realizing why she asked me to take her to China. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm trying to hold the theme. And that seems to come out of nowhere, but yeah. it makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe in 20 years we can go. That would be great. <laughs> Well, well done, thank, thank you. Thank you very Greg, much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Sounds thank like you. It's a tremendous success. It, kids it, endorsing the program. It was. It was great, and I appreciate the opportunity. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Correspondence? No. Committee reports. Policy committee. Jane, do you want to? Speak no, because I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. <laughs> All oh, right. With it. So, policy committee met and actually, can you hear me? I was. Oh, can I speak to it? Um, you sure. can say no. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can help. You can jump in. I'll say. I, okay. So, we reviewed two policies. Um, one was brought to our attention in that um, it was, it's the administration of medication. And so, we added to that policy. It's becoming more and more popular for students to use um, page 24, I believe. Uh, essential oils. So the policy is remaining the same. However, we have added uh, to that <coughs> last year. Um, the term med medication will include both prescription and non-prescription medications, including essential oils. And then the other policy that we reviewed, um, it was brought to our attention the nomination and election of board officers um, was incorrect in that the note at the bottom referenced policy 1610 and we need to note that change this evening. It should actually reference policy 1620. 
With that sort of introduction, then could I have a motion to uh, to uh, adopt the, the, the policies uh, based upon the recommendation of the superintendent um, to approve both the first reading and the adoption for a nomination of an election of board officer policy 1320, and then the change in administration of medication policy 7513. So moved. Second. Yeah. Any questions or discussion? For really relatively minor changes, the addition of, right. uh, of just the essential oils and the medication policy, and uh, really the change in reference number to the So the essential oils will be administered by the individual student, or is it still dispensed with the nursing office? So all medications, prescrip prescription and non-prescription, require a medical note. However, with the increased usage of essential oils, we found that students were just carrying them on their person and administering in, in the classroom or whenever as prescribed by a parent, perhaps. Um, so we've added that to the list, and that too now, if a student needs to use that, they'll have to have a doctor's note and also go to the nurse's office to administer that. It's not considered life-threatening, so they wouldn't carry that on themselves. No, it just goes along with the idea that as a child gets older, for them to be able to take responsibility and for their own well-being. Right. So um, regardless of what they're using it for. <laughs> Yeah, and at this point, um, students don't carry it unless it's a life-threatening, so like students carry an EpiPen, but again, that's prescribed by a doctor, so oh, yeah. those medications need to be um, at the nurse's office and under the supervision of a nurse, even if it's something like ibuprofen. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Carries. Thank you. And Douglas is not here tonight. Do we have a OCS or Central New York School Board? She didn't sit there. Okay. We'll move along. Administrator's report? Um, we do not have any this week. However, uh, Joe, Lauren, and I will be traveling to Albany. Uh, to discuss uh, the projects that we propose to state ed for review on ability. And so when is that? That's time. Oh, wow, all right. We'll make this brief <laughs> so you can get a good night's rest. Grace, anything to report on? Um, with school coming up, I know that people are planning and thinking more about what we're going to do for Spirit Week um, leading into homecoming. And all I know is that Friday we'll forever and always be blue and gold day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, freshman orientation is coming up on September 6th, and hopefully they're excited to join our school. Seniors shouldn't be too intimidating. <laughs> and uh, Bond Fest happened, I think, last week. Um, over 30 teams came and competed in the soccer tournament. And I'm not sure about the outcomes, but I know that I talked to a lot of people on the soccer team and they said that they had like a lot of fun and a lot of the seniors said that it was a good way to end to have their last Bond Fest be that one. So good. Any questions for Grace? Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda. Um, are there items that people have questions on that would like to be pulled from the consent agenda? Um, I would like to pull letter G, um, the district safety plan, letter I, superintendent evaluation, and letter K, approval of private school transportation. So if there are other ones that you'd like to pull so that we can discuss them, we can do so. Item F, the last two bullets aren't part of the finance packet, just so that you're not. Okay. So the purchase order status report and the budgetary transfer report are not. Hearing none, uh, motion for uh, acceptance of the consent agenda as presented. So Those in favor? Oh, second, Jane? Yes, second. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. 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 So, opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries. So if we could um, have a motion to 
the acceptance of the district safety plan be a result upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Humansburg Board of Education hereby accepts the district safety plan as amended. I need a motion for that. So moved. Discussion and, and changes for that? So I just wanted to mention that on page 20, uh, there's just a clerical change that we needed to make. Um, it listed me as the business administrator, and we've changed that to Lauren. It's page 99 of the pack. Okay. Yeah. So 99 of the pack of 20 of the district safety. Okay. Gotcha. So that now so, says Lauren. All right. So under section F number two, that's now been changed to to Lauren's to reflect yeah. her as in that position. Great. Any other questions or concerns of, about safety plan? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. If there's no objection, I'd like to just table um, the discussion of the superintendent's evaluation method um, for a, a, a later date. And then item K, need a motion for approval of private school transportation. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education for Trumansburg Central School District hereby approves the private school transportation um, as indicated um, to the Ithaca Waldorf School. A motion, please. So. Second? I'll second. Yeah. Okay. And so we'd like to change that to reflect that the private school transportation will be from the bus garage to, so on the to Ithaca Waldorf School. Okay. Or Ithaca Waldorf School. Waldorf School. So we're and the reason for that is that um, the physical home addresses exceeds the 15 miles of transportation that we're required to provide. So I'll change the motion to as amended. Please. Questions, other questions regarding this? I, I guess I know that Michelle. No, you know. no questions. Okay. There has been contact with the, the family in regard to this change and what has their reaction or? So Joe reached out to the family to let them know that they were beyond the 15 miles um, for transport and he has not yet heard back, however. Um, that was the offering for the district to make that we would provide transportation from the bus garage. Okay. So we're waiting to hear if that's acceptable to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're also aware of the fact that it's going to change the time that the student arrives? Yes, uh, that level. It's not by much. So we adjusted the route a little bit just to accommodate the school. So it's just a few minutes. But they're aware of that. Yeah, I sent the schedule to. Uh, via email to the mother and I just haven't heard back from her. Okay. Yeah. So we, we feel comfortable making that offering that we can transport the child, the start time and getting the child to uh, the private school was, is within 15 to 20 minutes of the start time of that school and it's also within the mileage requirement that we're required to transport. So um, if that's acceptable to the family then we can do that. If not, then it's their choice not to take advantage of that. This is a little bit of a side topic, but for some reason I thought that an adult consumption was not. Well, they were going to have another. Correct. This is Waldorf. Is okay. <coughs> I guess I got confused as to how that is in the mix. Isn't there another private school transport yeah, on the same route? Yeah, Montessori. Oh, Montessori. Okay. Okay. So it's not. Yeah. Okay. Oh, immaculate. Oh, yes. The note said immaculate. You're right on that. Yeah. Montessori. Montessori. And they're fairly close to each other in the Gardens. Yeah, they're within a few miles right from each other. other. Any other questions or concerns regarding the amended motion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to new business. Um, I have a motion to accept the first reading of the district goals. So moved. 
<laughs> All right, <laughs> there, we're really moving it along. Uh, um, so any questions or discussions in terms of the, the changes from what we saw at the retreat? I just have one uh, under board goal one. At the end of the um, sort of descriptor there, um, it, it references and or partake in a combination of experiences as approved by the high school principal. So I was unclear as to whether it was referring to the above experiences or additional experiences. It's an and or. Okay. Andor. That's my understanding. Is the way we look at it, okay. because there there will be students that will come up with a, a u very unique situation that will meet the concept, but might not fit under the terms of an internship or college credit or capstone. Right. If it if it doesn't fit, like there may be independent study or job shadowing experiences where they're sampling lots of different places or something like that, so. Okay, gotcha. The goal is just keeping it flexible because the idea, the intent is getting kids great career experiences. So we just want to keep flexibility in there. Any other questions or concern? Is there um, a reason or would anyone have concerns if not to adopt this tonight? Um, since we've seen the goals from the administrative retreat, and I think that really the rewording of one is the only only change. That's correct. I think it's a good idea to get it out first. Okay. So then, may I have a motion that we adopt <laughs> so <moved>. the board <laughs> goals <laughs> as as presented tonight? Okay. I know you just moved. I'm sorry. Can you reverse for a second? On this smart goal worksheet, it does say board of education goal and not district goal. Okay, we can add district, so we can say as amended and mm -hmm. add district to that. So may I have a, a motion to accept the district goals as, as amended with the word and the explanation offered by Mr. King? Uh, it actually says here, 2018 district goals. Oh, no, I was talking about on this. On the, on the, oh, yeah. on the smart goal form. It's okay, but the... But the and then perhaps amended with the resolution, resolution that right. is worded properly, correct? Yes, it okay. is. The resolution it is worded properly, amended. but that doesn't need to be amended. That needs to be corrected. The, the, that needs to be corrected. Okay, yes. now I got it. Thank okay. you for the clarification. Is this something that also will go up on the website for these blocks, or will they be summarized? Um, I think for probably the building purpose and for our faculty, we want them to be able to see the strategies and action steps and responsibility timeline and so on and so forth. I don't know if in terms of the website if you only want the district goal posted. But I think that's I think both make sense because for some people this is intimidating, but if it's just listed then it's more approachable. So having both for people who want to dig in and get more information makes more sense. Unless there, there's nothing sensitive no. in this no. at all. No. So okay. we could probably put a highlight with just the three the main goal and then put the PDFs Separate, on the yeah, websites so people can download them and look at those more in more depth if they're interested. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll second. I know Jane. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or further discussion? Those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. May I have a motion for Refunding of the school bond resolution, and I'm not going to read those three pages <laughs> uh, worth of, or five pages worth of, of that. Um, I would, but in the interest of getting everyone home so that they can go to Albany tomorrow and be the sharpest when you we stay there, we'll, we appreciate that. we'll forego that at the moment. So may I have a motion for that, please? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Discussion or questions for Warren or for Kimberly regarding this? <laughs> Great bedtime week. Okay, yes. Warren, can you summarize this for us in layman terms? Money. Uh, we're like saving money. It's kind of like refinancing. If you want specifics, uh, I, I just I printed out a summary page for you. Um, but basically, because of the um, change in the interest rates, 
take advantage of it now while um, you can. So and like refinancing your home for a yeah. lower mortgage interest rate? Yeah, more around 2% than 4%. Oh. Life is good. And of course, there will be market fluctuations on the selling price. But overall, um, they're forecasting savings of $160,000 over the next eight years, I think it is. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, 18. Eight years. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 Any specific questions for Lauren? Hearing none, those in, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you, and thank you, thank you yeah, for the sharp you. eyes and yeah. um, like work to be done so that we're saving money. We always like that. Now it's worth to read it. Yeah. I expect you to be able to, to tell me all of the, the caveats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving along then to item C, a motion. I have a motion, please, for the authorization of the superintendent of schools to sign a contract with Bernie P. Donegan Incorporated. Be it resolved that the Board of Education for the Trumansburg Central School District hereby authorizes the superintendent of schools to sign a contract between Trumansburg CSD and Bernie Donegan Incorporated as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Thanks. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion or questions? This is standard, sort of procedure. standard annual procedure. There are and fiscal advisors, right. so it's just time to sign a new contract. Contract. Mm -hmm. And this is for the duration of this, 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 this fiscal, fiscal year. school year. Okay. And and Bernie Donegan's been our person regarding for this for, for 20 years, <laughs> yeah. maybe longer, I think. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Kimberly or Lauren on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Item D, a motion please for the abolishment of a vacant position be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby abolishes the following vacant position effective August 28, 2017, a bus driver 1.0 FTE. So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. Any discussions or questions? So would be primarily for Joe. You want to just quickly walk us through this the abolishment? It's the retiree that we are okay. not replacing. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <I> have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> okay. Falls under saving money. So our, our routes and, and that just don't warrant the continuation of this. No, we position. reduced two routes. And so one person retired, and now I have a rover. So when I need a sub, this person will fill in as a sub. Okay. So it's and, an excellent and person, position. position that retired, we're just abolishing that. Great. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Item E, um, do we need to mention the person's name here or yes? I yes. guess we do. Okay. A motion for the approval of a stipend for David Inc. be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby approves a stipend of $7,000 for David Inc., head mechanic, for the supervisory duties and other duties as assigned in the transportation department during the 2017-18 school year. Motion. Second. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Joanna moved it. Joanna moved it and seconded by Michelle. Yes. Questions and discussion. <laughs> I, have, I have a question. Um, it seems like he was hired to be a supervisor. And we're paying him a stipend to be a supervisor. So, so when he was first hired, that was part of the civil service job description. However, um, at the time of hire, he was not in a position necessarily to supervise. Um, he was a new employee, and time has since passed, and we feel that he's in that role, and there's additional responsibilities that we'd like him to step up and take care of, so this stipend authorizes that. So as, as he was hired as a head mechanic, at a certain rate, it didn't include the supervisory work that he's now doing? It was not at the level that the expectation will be now. That's true. 
So he was checking buses and checking in with bus drivers. However, he didn't really have any authority at that time because drivers had more experience and more time invested with the district. Mm -hmm. Now that he's been here, his expertise as a mechanic and also uh, the ability to cover when Joe is not available, when he's at other locations on campus, this will authorize him to act in that supervisory position. Okay, so he's acting as a supervisor, but now we're paying him to act as a supervisor? And there are some additional duties, is that true, Joe, that he's taking Yeah, on? there's, I mean, I had created a job description for the stipend um, that included a, a lot of additional things that I needed him to do um, that he currently doesn't do under his title now. <coughs> so um, instead of having a full job description, we just kind of said as, as other duties as assigned. Um, it doesn't, in the job description for a head mechanic, it doesn't say direct supervision over bus drivers. It just says direct supervision over um, mechanics and other uh, employees as assigned. So, yeah, but the bus drivers don't look at him as their supervisor. This small stipend will allow me to say, here you go. He is now going to be your, your, your first point of contact if you have a problem, question, and that type of stuff. Um, you know, he'll participate in some of the evaluations with the bus drivers, which the head mechanic position doesn't currently really say that he does. So this stipend just allows us a little flexibility for him to participate in things that I don't think that too many other head mechanics in the area do. Most of the head mechanics in the area are just supervise over other mechanics. They don't supervise bus drivers. Um, so this support system that we're creating with this stipend helps me to free me up to do just some other things that I really have just haven't had a chance to do. Um, just because, I mean, from 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock, it's constant interruption, and then from 1 o'clock till, or 1.30 till 3.30, 2.30, is constant interruption. Just, so this will deflect some of the stuff to him um, and just allow him to kind of be my, my sidekick, so to speak, just to help me out just with some of the day-to-day the -day tasks that, that I really need him to, to help out with. To help give you more advantages for the bus drivers, too, because there's an immediacy between question and answer. Because one of the things that the bus drivers had shared with Mark, um, um, Mark that did our transportation study, was that it was hard to get to me because I wasn't around a lot. So this is just some, just another tool for us to say, okay, you know, Dave is your go-to guy right away. And if they need me, then we can schedule a time. And it's just more um, direct supervision, like like day-to-day, -day direct, always there, um, that type of, of supervision that just, I try to do, but I just don't have enough hours in the day to, to get done. So. Any so other questions for Joe or Kimberly? I hear, I, hear I hear you. It just sounded like we were paying him to be a supervisor when he was already a supervisor. Yeah, he didn't come to us with that. So. Kimberly would never do that. No. <laughs> I thought you did. We've been talking about this for I'm, I'm probably a year now. Not good with the numbers, but I'm not bad with words. <laughs> is there a similar, at each building, is there a similar super? Yeah. yeah. So He's my dean of transportation. So you just, right. You just didn't have somebody in that role. Right. Right. And George is my dean of maintenance. Right. So with those two people in that position, that is a huge support system for me. And for the employees. Yeah. And for the employees, correct. Because they can get an answer immediately. Right. And those kinds of questions sometimes are critical. Yep. Time sensitive. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. I understand all the clear enough. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. May I have a motion to 
for approval to increase senior groundskeeper positions by one FTE be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the increase of senior groundskeeper positions by one FTE. This position will be applied to the terms provided in the current support staff agreement. So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. Discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Item G, may I have a motion for 2017-18 entry level of pay be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby establishes the following 2017-18 entry level salary for the school year, senior groundskeeper at $20 at 30 cents per hour. Second. Thank you. D discussion or questions for Kimberly or Warren on this? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank motion carries. Thank you. Item H. May I have a motion for approval of additional summer curriculum projects be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of the schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the additional summer curriculum projects for the school year 2017-18. So second. Questions or discussion? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Looks like a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> it does, yes. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Open form. Again, an opportunity for those in the audience, our sole single person. <laughs> um, hearing no requests, we'll move along. Board forum. Um, one of the main focuses was to try to determine um, times for committee members to meet, but since Douglas and Sarah aren't here and they're both on a number of committees, um, I would suggest that we maybe postpone that till our next board meeting. I think we had initially suggested that there was a suggestion to have the prior to the actual board meetings, right? We think that some may be able to fit into that format, however, others um, will take a significant will take significant more time. So at facilities it wouldn't really be possible to meet at five. So yeah, I wanted to have a discussion with board members. Too, not always. Sometimes yeah. yes, sometimes. Probably not yeah. so much. Yeah. So I think we just need to have a an open conversation when all members are here to see what we can fit into their calendars. It'd be cool to maybe get a visual just because we're on multiple committees. It'd be cool to get a visual of the, I the ideal amount of time that each committee would need okay. as far as frequency and links. Oh, yeah. That's and just so we, we, could, can, we could draft that. Yeah, so we can look at it and have a discussion that way just as far as like well, up on the big So screen. I'll have Tina put together yeah. who's on each committee Perfect. and then I can recommend length of time and frequency and we'll have some sort of visual for the next board meeting. And then that could maybe go in the agenda because if one of us has a strong opinion sure. about no, I think that should really meet more frequently or whatever. Okay. We so it'll be a starting point. The starting point ahead of time. It'll be our conversation yeah. starter. There you go. That'd be great. Yeah, I Annie. think last year there were some policy committee meetings that were consistent with the because right. it wasn't necessary to have them. Yeah, it's rolling. It depends on whether or not if you have only one policy and it's not something that's particularly pressing right now, then put that in with the next one so you can be more efficient and look at several at the same time. Which frequently makes the public committee go stronger, but yes. Let's Let's yes. <laughs> Trade off. Other points of discussion for board members. Hearing none, um, may I have a motion to adjourn? To oh, I'm one, sorry, John. No sweat. I just have one quick announcement. I want to share that uh, you heard in Grace's report that the Bond Fest was a huge success. We had it was that was the first games played on the new, the new Bond Sunday. Field. Oh yes. yes. With the so I want to tell you first of all a huge thanks to Joe and his crew because our fields are absolutely amazing. It is to stand out there and watch them play soccer on that field, as well as on the stadium field, as well as the, the modified field over here. 
our fields look absolutely immaculate. That soccer field and the work that was done is astounding. It's gorgeous. Mr. Bob um, will be pumped. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, a green so, dedication. So there will be a, yeah, that's, so there's a dedication, a grand opening, official opening of the field uh, next Thursday, the 7th at. Uh, is that correct? Is that the 7th? It's, it's the, the girls' varsity game. It's the girls' varsity soccer game on Thursday, the 7th, which I believe is a 4 30 game. So all are invited and please encourage to, to come out and help us celebrate the grand reopening of the Bond Field. So, so thank you on behalf of the soccer program and all the kids that use that. I'll tell you, we had 31 teams here last Wednesday and it went without a hitch. Again, a testament to Jason's work as our athletic director to run that event, chicken barbecues for all 31 teams and all their coaches and driver, bus drivers and whatnot. It was a huge event, huge success out there. Um, and our fall sports are off and running. We got both the girls and boys are away at Sherburn tournaments this weekend and then all sorts of home games. Tomorrow's the first volleyball game tomorrow night. Great. So if you're looking for something to do on a weekday evening, <laughs> come on out. Usually about 4.35 o'clock, there's always something going on. Thank you, Joe. Maybe just as a foreshadowing for next board meeting, you, you could update us on numbers or, or Jason could in terms of participation, sure. or maybe if it's not the next board meeting, the, the second one in September might be more appropriate. We could yeah. then have modified numbers also. Yeah, absolutely. That would be, that would be great. great. Anyone else? I would like to say thank you to Transbridge Central School. My granddaughter starts her college career as a sophomore. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Yay. 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 And hopefully in the next four years, we're going to increase that, <laughs> that number and opportunity. That's bad with us. Hearing no other, may I have a motion uh, for executive session relating to item seven, matters relating to the appointment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person, persons, or corporation. Thank you. Please to be narrowed down, like specifically what they're for. This one will be the matter. Matters. Matters. Personnel. 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 Yeah. I didn't see that on there, but I don't see that. I don't see personnel. Promotion. Promotion. I don't know. What it you appointment. How's personal. appointment? Appointment. <laughs> yes. So we're no, adjourned to executive six. session. Thank you very much.